Creek team, the highest ever ranked team to visit the Sanford Coyotes Sports Center at number 21. The Coyotes have twice faced number 22 in this building. They're one and one in those games against Iowa State in 2018 and Missouri State in 2019. But Janai Uguski and Evaronzik into the center circle. The ball is up and we are underway here in Vermillion. Kennedy Townsend sets up the offense. Or excuse me, that's Molly Mogensen, number 21, not number two. As they go right inside for Morgan Molly, who converts. And Creighton getting a post touch right away. And that's what they're so good at. That's why they shoot a high percentage. They get a lot of shots at the rim. Here's Madison Graves, the transfer from Utah Valley. Most experienced Coyote on the floor right now. He's played over 100 games for Utah Valley. And speak of the devil, <laughs> Alexi Hempy. Yeah, picking up right where she left off in their first game. And I tell you, confidence goes a long way just helping a shooter get off to a good start. She has it right there. Backdoor cut. There's Mogensen, the left-handed finish. Mogensen might be a familiar name to South Dakota folks. Her brother Brock is the starting middle linebacker for the Coyote football team. <laughs> his family, he and his family in attendance here tonight. Some athletic genes there in the Mogensen clan. What a finish inside. Break for Grace Larkins. First bucket of the night for the sophomore of Altoona, Iowa. Now you're going to see both these teams play offensively with an open floor. Not a lot of low posting. Basket cuts right there. Ronsick getting one for Creighton. Kind of worked herself away from the rim, took the percentage of conversion down a little bit yeah. as she fell away there. And yeah, they would want to see her finishing towards the basket, not away from it. Larkins right back to the 10, back to back buckets for Grace Larkins. So the Coyotes have a 7 4 lead as we near 8 15 to play first quarter. Now, this is going to be a high volume game possession wise. These teams aren't afraid to shoot early shot clock. Rachel Saunders, too strong off the window. Rebound pulled in by Uguski. Now the Coyotes push the issue. But Larkin's pass tipped away and taken away by Lauren Jensen. Yeah, good defense by Molly there. Tough little runner there for Jensen. Contact underneath, no whistle. Wide open look, Macy Giebert off the front rim. And a whistle on the rebound will go against South Dakota. Madison Grange, her first. As you watch these teams play offense, I think you're going to really see a very up-tempo game. But you're going to see a lot of offensive ball reversal, looking to drive basket cuts. Creighton, in particular, is tough to guard because they just don't allow help defense to play a role. Spot up three for Molly. Grace Larkins chases down that loose ball, brings it back into the front court. Here's Grange. She can really shoot it, Brad. Hasn't shown it yet. She's been one that was a late arrival, you know, via the transfer yep. portal, but didn't get to make the trip to Greece with this team in the offseason. So she was playing a little bit of catch up and has yet to really find her rhythm. Although Kayla Caria said the team has done a great job welcoming her in and making her feel part of the team and part of the family that they've got here. To your point, I mean, very experienced player from Utah Valley is where she was at before, but played over 100 games there. So that's the valuable experience they wanted from her. Great defense there is Larkins takes away the entry pass. Alexi Hempy. Yeah, it's a good matchup there. Hempy, size advantage, got a good look at it. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by South Dakota. A couple of changes here for Kayla Carius. Walker demurs. The freshman post from Grafton, North Dakota, into the game early, along with Morgan Hansen, the Sioux Falls, South Dakota product. When you look at the players that these teams have, even at the post, they're very athletic. They have the ability to step out and shoot it. These teams both boast a lot of skill on the offensive end. Carly Bachelors checked in for the first time for Creighton as well. She replaced Morgan Molly. As here's Demers, reclassified Brad. She should be a senior in high school right now, but she joined the class of 2022 after graduating a year early. Range on the drive. 
draws the foul. Two free throws coming up for Madison Green. And this is what Kayla Cargis wants to see out of Grange. Attack off the bounce. Be aggressive. Ball's going to be in her hands quite a bit on the offensive end. That senior experience. First point of the night for Grange. Senior out of Holiday, Utah. Average just over 10 and a half points per game. And shot the three at a 39% clip yep. for the Wolverines last season. When she gets that rhythm that we've talked about her trying to establish, Brad, she's going to add a nice piece offensively for Kayla Karius. And Aronzik with her first field goal of the ball game. And that's a good little play there. Back screen, get Ronsick in the post and try to get her going offensively. Again, she's their leading scorer returning from last year. Murs inside out. Morgan Hansen left it short. Here's Jensen on the drive. Blows past Gebert, but left the layup short. That was a good job by Gebert, though. Don't give up on the play. Still force Jensen that time to have to try to score over her. Oh, nice pivot inside. Wow. Left-handed fit it for Grace Larkins. We saw a little bit of that out of her last year in a more limited role, but we're going to see a lot more of it, I think, this year. She has Absolutely. got some great finishing skills around the basket. Well, and she's just got a quick first step. She can get to the rim. And she can also create some offense with her defense on this end. Rebound touched last by Ronzik, and it'll go back to South Dakota. We've got a timeout on the floor. 4.57 to play first quarter. Solid start for Kayla Karius and the Kyles. They lead number 21 Creighton by five. Well, not too bad if in your first game as head coach of a program, you can watch your squad set a school record, but that's exactly what Kayla Carius <laughs> yes. saw the other night. His team came out against Midland, a non-D1, but they hit 19 threes in that contest, Brad, on 27 attempts. So not only did they hit 19 of them, they were extremely efficient from beyond the arc. That record, by the way, beat the previous high of 17. Uh, USD had said a few years ago, but and it didn't really matter who was shooting them. They were going in yeah. Kayla Karius said didn't see it coming. I mean, I knew my team could score I'm not sure. I thought that was gonna happen. <laughs> Certainly one of those things that became contagious in that game Let's see if they can get it ramped up here tonight On cue. Oh, that would have been too good. Grace Larkins would have been able to knock that one down instead It's another miss USD one of five to start so far here tonight. Yeah, the shooting isn't there right now for USD, but what is the rebounding right now? They're plus three on the glass, Jay. That's why they have this lead in this game. They've gotten some extra possessions. The Larkins just doesn't stop attacking, and she's fouled there. Jim Flannery doesn't like the call, and two free throws coming up here for Larkins. Well, how aggressive in this game has Grace Larkins been to start? She has put her head down, got to the rim. Being able to finish, has three baskets as a result, and now this time drawing a foul. And Larkins, who had 18 points in just 18 minutes in the opener, already up to eight here tonight on three of four shooting. And this is what we were talking about in our open. This is what USD needs from Larkins. She is now their go-to player. She's the star player of this team, and she started out this game just playing like that. Creighton just 3 of 11 to start the ball game from the field. Hoganson kicks it all the way out. Jensen off target. Transition three attempt for Grange. Last touch by Hansen. So Gebert returns for South Dakota here. We see Saunders and Molly back onto the floor for the Blue Jays. That's terrific offense for South Dakota. That's how they want to draw it up. You get a defensive stop, get the rebound, you push, you get a wide open transition three. Those are the rhythm threes that Kayla Cargis wants her team to take offensively. Ooh, that looked like solid defense there from Hansen. Kayla Cargis thought so. 
Yeah, these are really difficult plays to officiate. Oh, arms down. Yeah, that's, yep. the, that's the call. Exactly. But, you know, you're absorbing a lot of contact, too, as a defender. But they want Morgan Hansen to be that. They want her to be an aggressive defender in the post. They need her to be a good post defender for this team this year. Great length because Morgan's listed at six foot, but she's got quite a wingspan on her. And that could obviously disrupt some things, whether passing lanes or in the post. Absolutely. Great needs to get back into just kind of being a little more disruptive. I thought in their win Monday at South Dakota State, Jay, they were very disruptive. They they put the Jacks on their heels a lot, and they're doing it now here at this possession. You see it. Larson, Larkins, rather, lost her footing. Now a transition chance for Creighton. In and out, off the hand of Carly Batchelor. And this game may come down to which team can take advantage of turnovers and turning them into points. Looks like Creighton says they didn't touch it. Hanson thought Creighton touched it, so she let the ball go out of bounds. I mean, she had the play to catch the ball, but she just chose not to because she saw Creighton got a finger on it. Yeah, it's one of those situations, if you're not sure, probably better safe than sorry, go ahead and get that ball offensively. The officials got together, reversed their decision. A lot of things have gone well to this point, but South Dakota has turned it over three times here in this first quarter. Right now, South Dakota doubling that ball screen hard, and it's worked well. Inside out, Jensen for three. Shots just not falling. And Walker demurs. She is physical, Brad. You see it there. In the tie up on the floor. That is one part of her game that Kayla Karius. Mentioned specifically as she gets tied up there with Molly. Oh, what a, oh wow. Okay, so they actually called a foul on her there. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think how that could have been a, a hell ball, but boy, that call is not going to sit well with most of the fans here. Now, there's going to be some physicality in this game. Creighton's not afraid to mix it up. They play in the Big East Conference. That's the kind of basketball that conference is known for. Turn around jumper for Molly brings the Blue Jays back within four, 13 to nine. The Larkins. Oh, I'm not sure how she got that one up and over. But 10 points already for Grace Larkins. Well, if there was any question, is Larkins ready to take over this team and, and be the leader? I think the answer's been Put before us already here in this first quarter. Some good coverage defensively that time. She got a hand on that pass, deflected it out of bounds. As Ronsick returns now for Creighton, replacing Mallory Brake. So Molly will inbound underneath for Creighton with 17 on the shot clock here. 2.10 to play first quarter. That's some moisture on the floor trying to take care of over there. I think South Dakota, while they're happy certainly with where their offense is, I think they've got to be really pleased, too, where they're at defensively right now. I mean, Creighton's a team that can really fill it up, scored almost 80 points Monday at South Dakota State. USD's held them to nine here so far. Strong move by Molly. Fouled by Hempy. Couldn't get the bucket to go, but two free throws coming. For the junior out of Creighton, Nebraska. Reigning Big East sixth woman of the year here. And Morgan Molly, one of those veteran players. Was a double figure score last year on this team. Now into the starting lineup. She could shoot it from outside too. Second on the team last year with 80 triples. Well, that's the thing. Creighton's got post players that can step out and shoot it. It makes them really difficult to guard. Foul on the free throw miss there. Called against Rachel Saunders. 13 foul for Creighton. Madison Grange back onto the floor here for South Dakota. Creighton's known for great ball pressure, and you're seeing it right here. Good post entry there. Nice finish. Janaya Yugovsky, first field goal. 
And with great ball pressure does mean one-on-one -on, -one on the post, and South Dakota takes advantage of it. Hogenson picked up her dribble. Here's Molly again. Beat it over the top, Ronson. Good recovery there by Uguski. South Dakota flying around on this possession as well. Step back. Jumper for Molly. Chased down by Larkins. Larkins doing it all here in this first quarter. And a foul underneath will go against Molly. So yeah, they said she displaced Hempy down there. She was trying to post. Well, first personal on Molly. Fourth team foul for Creighton. Both teams sitting at four for the quarter. So free throws the rest of the way. And that's going to be a held ball. Ball stays with South Dakota. Well, that's just great defense by a veteran player and Rachel Saunders from Creighton recognizing okay Hey, Grace Larkin's been real aggressive in this first quarter leaves her Person she's guarding to tie up the ball there and clog up the lane Range tried to thread that one into Larkin's but it's knocked away. That's the fourth turnover now for South Dakota Ronzik ooh, lots of steps there. No travel call. She got it back now she puts it back. That won't go either. Another offensive rebound. This for Molly. And the jumper is good. So the third time counts for Creighton. And their first basket really outside of the paint. They are still looking for their first three in this game as well. Epi off the dribble. Play with a lot of confidence here in the early part of this season. 19-12, South Dakota on top. That's their largest lead of this first quarter. Shot clock is off. Molly Mogensen backing down Larson, hands it off. Molly for three, that's short. Epi with plenty of time to get a shot off here. Back comes Jensen off the turnover, 14-footer is short. And that was an appropriate finish to the quarter. Creighton struggled to shoot the basketball. They sure did. The Blue Jays just 23%. But I tell you who's not struggling, Grace Larkins in this first quarter for USD. 10 points, four of five from the field. And oh yeah, add five more rebounds to it. She's stuffing that stat sheet. Like Creighton, yeah. I mean, at least 10 minutes in, you've got to like how that litmus test is looking, right? Absolutely. I mean, that was a dream first quarter for South Dakota. The only thing they didn't do well was take care of the ball. Five turnovers, but it really didn't lead to points for Creighton, and that was the key. Now Saunders going to get called for a moving screen here, so the ball will go to South Dakota. As Jays were trying to get it into Emma Ronzik, who hasn't been able to get it going quite yet. Sioux Falls O'Gorman product. I love what South Dakota's done on this, and they've moved the ball well inside, outside, gotten great looks at the basket in the paint. Range stuck with that play, Brad, and creates an extra possession as the ball gets tied up on the floor. Arrow favors South Dakota here. So the Coyotes keep it. They put 20 seconds back in the shot clock. Now, and the boards have been huge for South Dakota. They're plus five there right now. That continues. They're going to have a great chance of getting a win against a top 25 team tonight. Good eye, Guski. Working on Ronzik. A little too strong there. Ronzik pulls in the rebound. And this is the versatility of Ronzik. Can get a board and bring the ball up the floor. And look at her work inside. She's got Larkins. Mismatch, yep. And a reach-in called against Larkins. That'll be her first. And that's not a bad foul for Larkins because you don't want to have to try to contest once she has the ball. South Dakota got caught in a switch that time. Not the matchup they wanted. Jensen. Mogensen took a dribble, pops the jumper. Four points for Molly Mogensen. Just the sixth made field goal. Creighton shooting 26%, Jay, in this game. They shot 50% Monday at South Dakota State. Didn't get off to a great start in that game either, though. Tra trailed the Jackrabbits at halftime yep. and flipped the script on the road in the third quarter. 
as Larkins continues to attack here. Ronzik didn't like the call, but two free throws coming up for Larkins. Yeah, that was a tough one to go against Ronzik. I thought she had pretty good position. I thought Larkins created that contact. The block certainly looked clean. One of two on this trip for Larkins. 11 points for her to lead all scores. Molly has eight for Creighton. Creighton putting Ronsek with the ball so she can slide into the post. A good recognition of that pass. Tough one to go cross court with for Creighton, but they will keep the basketball here as Hempy knocked it out of bounds. There's 15 on the shot clock as Mogensen gets set to inbound from the baseline. Yeah, early on, South Dakota has scouted Creighton well. They're taking away a lot of their initial looks that the Blue Jays want to get. Step back three for Jensen will go. Creighton now 0 of 7 from beyond the arc. Catch and shoot, 15-footer for Macy Gebert. I'll talk about a player who has waited her turn, Absolutely. Brad. Macy Gebert's been here a long time, and one of the leaders on this team, certainly from an experience standpoint, one that's been in this program knows what it's like to be a player here. Absolutely, and they, they need her to be, come up and become a big senior leader for this team. So they call held ball there. Arrow stays with Creighton. Crowd reacted. They thought it was going to be a late whistle for a foul call, but then she got the palm over the top of the ball. So it stays with Creighton on alternating possession. There's 13 on the shot clock. Walker to Mers. Back into the game for South Dakota, along with Nicole Avila Ambrosi. Mogensen cut off inside. Good find. Little floater, Jamie Haran scores for the first time tonight. Twenty-two, sixteen, approaching seven and a half to play first half. Number twenty-one, Creighton, against the South Dakota team that was receiving votes in the preseason poll. The Murs keeps the possession alive here for South Dakota. Larkins back at it, working on Sanders. Saunders, excuse me, and now another foul will send Larkins back to the free throw line. So she never takes her foot off the gas, does she? Yeah, even when you think you have her stopped, she just never quits. And she's not afraid to play some physicality down there at the guard position. And she's done a great job in this game drawing fouls. She's going to get her first break. Well deserved. And I think part of this is just she's been involved in some physical stuff. Don't want to pick up a cheap second foul. But she has been a huge part of South Dakota building this six-point lead here. Now she's got half their points, so we'll see. 16 yeah. is your score. Yep, she's got 11 of them. And now a Villa Ambrosi, Ambrosi, another one of the transfers that's moved into this program out of Cal Baptist, turns it over there. And yeah, a player that grew up in Omaha, played at Miller North High School, so certainly familiar with the Blue Jays as well in this area. Won a state title at Middle, Miller North back in 2019. That's her guarding the ball right there. Now, South Dakota's been terrific on this, and I think they've had good ball pressure. They've been the more aggressive and scrappy team. Burrs wouldn't let... Ronza get around here. Here's Mogensen right at the shot clock horn. That's going to be a shot clock violation. Yeah, the ball did not hit the rim. And South Dakota comes up with their finest defensive possession, and they've had some good ones in this game. You're not going to see Creighton take that thing down 30 seconds very often. Obviously, defense has always has been the trademark for this South Dakota women's program for a long time. Don Plitzowai, that was her calling card. They led the Summit League, Brad, and defensive score and just 53 points yes. per game allowed last year the question was how are they going to translate under Kayla Karius well so far it's looked pretty good on that end boy it really has they've held this Creighton team down although South Dakota turns it over again that time I think one of the big keys here too is just they've really shut down the leading scores for Creighton so far in this game and we have not mentioned the name Laura Jensen, number 15 out there in blue. 
Jay, she had 30 points in their first game. She has yet to score tonight. She's tried. 0 of 6. That's her right Overall, there. Overall, 0 of 3 from beyond the arc. There's the first one on cue. If you're Creighton, you've got to get her going. I mean, she is such a spark for this team, and they feed off of her energy and what she does on the offensive end. Getting inside, here's the freshman, Demers. Rebound controlled by Mogensen. Back up the floor. Kyle's didn't get, do a good job getting back that time, and Mallory Brake takes advantage. Well, as soon as Grace Larkin left this game for USD, it has been all Creighton since, and that's why Kayla Karras is just now going to call timeout to get Larkins back in this game. So Creighton a little bit of a run here. Four straight points, a 6-0 run overall. They're back with it too. Mallory Brake makes it 22-20 USD. Well, you talk about lost production. <laughs> The entire starting five gone for South Dakota, either through graduation or transfer portal. And that's 84% of the yes. team scoring from a year ago. That's when we talk about, okay, who's going to step up and shoulder some of that load? Grace Larkins certainly looks poised to do that with the way she's played here tonight, already up to 11 points to lead all scores. But, you know, she's got literally half of the team's points. They're going to have to get some production from other places. Obviously, Alexi Hempy seems like a good option. Morgan Hansen, they believe, can be yes. another really quality option for them. Madison Grange as well. Avila Ambrosi is another one that they think could score the ball for them as well. So right now, though, between turnovers and missed shots, the offense has hit a little bit of a lull here to start the second quarter. Yeah, just one for six USD to start this second frame. And tied up on the floor, South Dakota gets the arrow and the basketball. And well, how many times have we seen this from Walker Demers already in yeah. this first half? Like you mentioned, very scrappy physical player, freshman post, not afraid to get on the floor. Some pressure on that inbound that time from Creighton. Coyotes handle it well, and Macy Giebert. Brings it into the front court. Here's Larkins back into the game after a brief break. Kyle Crowd wanted a foul there, didn't get it. Great bringing a lot more help on Larkins. Not going to let her just go one on one very much anymore in this game. Mogensen knocks down the jumper, and we are tied at 22 apiece. 8 0 run for the Jays over the last three and a half minutes. Really, it's been on this end. USD with some turnovers, missed shots that have led to transition for Creighton. Good look here for Giebert. Back iron, offensive rebound for Grange. And that first quarter, the ball was going through the net so much for South Dakota that Creighton never got any transition. Not the case here in the second quarter. Team fouls favoring South Dakota right now strongly. That's the fourth on Creighton here in the second quarter. So Kyles will be at the free throw line, starting with the next whistle. Boy, they are really getting after Larkins now. And not much room for her to work there. Demers just lost the handle in the basketball. Another turnover, nine now on the board for South Dakota already. Jensen. Attacking, scoring, and Creighton has its first lead since it was 2 0. Well, I'm doing it with their defense. Creighton's really ramped things up here in this second quarter, forcing turnovers, leading them to some offensive transition that have gotten them back in this game. Hanson, nice spin move. Left hand won't go. This is where South Dakota, they've got to dig in defensively. When your offense is struggling, it's hard, but you've got to come up with stops. And at that moment, Creighton is starting to catch fire. That's their first three made of the game. Molly knocks that one down, her first in four attempts. It's a 13-0 run now for Creighton. And really, it's all this in. South Dakota's one for nine, Jay, shooting it here in the second quarter after going seven of 13 in the first quarter. Kyle's led a 22-14 at the 7.59 mark of the second quarter. It has not scored since. 
And Creighton, as we just mentioned, has put together 13 straight. Here's Larkins. Still can't get the lid off. Yeah, I think you're starting to see fatigue setting up in here a little bit too for South Dakota. Played with so much energy out of the gate. Oh, gets a tough drive and she's fouled. That will send her to the free throw line. Foul is called on Graves. That'll be her second. Gusky, Cassidy Carson into the game for the first time for South Dakota. Alexi Hempy returning as well. Hanson, Demers, and Grange will have a seat. Jay, you look at this Creighton team, and you know this team reminds me a lot of kind of what USD was last year in a lot of ways. You have so many quality players back. You know, this is a Creighton team that advanced all the way to the Elite Eight last year and basically returns everyone. Dayton Rimbaugh, the only player not back for creating their point guard from last year. And all the way to the Elite Eight, Elite eight before finally losing to number one South Carolina, ending that Cinderella run. South Dakota, of course, beating Ole Miss, then Baylor in Waco before losing a tight one in Wichita to the University of Michigan in the Sweet 16. Carson. Going inside, Uguski off the window too strong. Rebound touched by Carson. And it goes for another empty possession for South Dakota. 15-0, the run and counting right now for Creighton. Well, and South Dakota's last basket was at the 8-20 mark in this quarter. So I mean, these are the kind of scoring droughts that really hurt you. Tough to overcome that against a quality team like Creighton, who's then put their foot on the gas on this end, taking this seven point advantage. Creighton with 35 shot attempts compared to 24 for South Dakota. The turnovers, big part of that. South Dakota with eight. As Jensen hits again, and they are sizzling now. Boy, they really are. And Jensen's one of those players, once she gets going, she can really light it up. Now she had 30 the other night, but 16 of those J came in the fourth quarter alone. Three second call whistle against Hempy. So it's all going wrong on this end of the floor right now for South Dakota. Yeah, and, and the turnovers are the big part of it, but then it's the missed shots on top of that. And it's kind of a helpless feeling as a team, and I know as a head coach over there for Kayla Carrius trying to figure out how to get her team back to playing the way they were in the first quarter. Saunders, here's Ronzik, steps around the defender, but off the heel of the rim, rebound pulled in by Uguski. Under a minute to go, first, set, first half. You can see Creighton bring a lot more help when Larkins puts it on the deck than they were in the first quarter. Lazy pass there, poked away by Saunders, lays it in, and the, the run is 19 to nothing for Creighton. Well, and the big thing, 10 points for Creighton off of turnovers, and that is what has fueled this huge run in the second quarter. That's how good of a start South Dakota had in this game, though, Brad. They've given up 19 straight points, and they're still only down 11. <laughs> yeah. Shot clock is off here as Larkins tries to find something. Here's Carson. Quick trigger for three. Carson left it short. Rebound for Jensen, and that'll do it for the first half. So Creighton closes the second quarter with 19 straight points to go from down eight to up 11 as we head to the break here in Vermillion. 33-22 your score. Rachel Jensen and the Jays looking for another quality road win to start their season here tonight. Starts of the third quarter here at the Sanford Kyle Sports Center. Creighton gets the basketball first. Up 11 and still riding a 19-0 run that they jumped on to close the second quarter. 
Morgan Molly, their leading scorer tonight, goes right back to work, leads it short. Well defended there by Alexi Hempe. And that's the key for South Dakota getting back in this game. It starts with defensive stops. They didn't get a lot of them in the second quarter. Those defensive stops let them get out in transition. Gusky travel. Yep. Tried to back up, and it looked like Rodzik just gave a little extra ground there and yep. caused her to shuffle both feet. Yeah, the old pull the chair out from under you type of thing, and Rodzik, a veteran player, did it well that time. Now you see this high set by Creighton where they start with nobody in the low poles. It's real difficult to guard and protect the paint defensively. And Larkin just picked up her second foul as Jensen hits the deck. This ball screen action from the wing is a staple of the Creighton offense, and that time Larkin tried to go through it rather than around it. Obviously a big foul on Larkin's number two early in the third quarter. Catch and shoot for three, Mogensen. Rebound tapped into the hands of Hempy. Now neither team has gotten anything going from the three-point line. Both of these squads, one for nine. On the drive, there's Larkins, too strong. Offensive rebound, second chance coming out. Larkins for three this time. Got it, and the drought is over. And she was not going to be denied that time, and that's the first bucket for USD since the 8-20 mark of the second quarter. So you go almost an entire 10 minutes of game time between hoops. Ollie trying to answer. Cannot, reigns the rebound. South Dakota. One of its last 11 from the field. Range. Tough shot. She'll go to the free throw line. Foul will be called on Ronzik, her second. Now, this is what we're talking about when we say your defense, getting some stops, helps you offensively. Because South Dakota was able to get out, run, and attack early in the shot clock before Creighton was set. And Kayla Carius knows that's important for her team offensively to be able to play in the open floor. There wasn't a lot of that in the second quarter. Carly Batchelor was checked into the game for Creighton, replacing Rachel Saunders. And as Grange for the second of her two free throws gets them both. South Dakota, seven of eight at the strike. And it's a six-point ball game, 33-27. Just the start, South Dakota needed a 5-0 run of their own here to get themselves back in it. Hansik. Jumper no good. That's just a really nice job by South Dakota. They're switching when they need to, helping when they need to defensively, really flying around that possession. Five out here. In the half court, here's Grange now, puts it on the deck. Inside out, Gieber for three. The outside shooting struggles continue for South Dakota. They're 2 of 11. Great hustle, though, by Larkins to get back in the play there, but a little too late on that closeout. Mogensen with her first three of the night, and she joins Molly in double figures, tied for the team high with 11 points. Mogensen's not really typically a big score for this team. Averaged about six a game last year. Last touch by South Dakota. Gebert, strong take there, just couldn't finish. Ball goes back over to Creighton with 7.04 to play in the third quarter. Here's the bottom line for South Dakota. If they're going to hang in this game, somebody besides Grace Larkins has got to start scoring for them. I mean, she's got 14 of their 27. Molly, open path to the rim. It's an offensive foul, and there to take it is the young lady who's done a lot of that in her career, Giannaya Yuguski. And Yuguski coming over. The foot was close to that yeah, restricted arm. I think so, too. Bang, bang plays in there in the post, looking at that. On 
36-27, South Dakota trailing Creighton, 648 to go here in the third quarter. Six forty-eight to go, third quarter. Jim Flannery, the Creighton head coach, has used the challenge on that last play. Remember, Janai Guski getting over, drawing what was called on the floor as a charge. The question being her right foot, maybe even the left foot. Both feet are close. From that angle, it's tough to see if your heels on the the line of that restricted arc, Brad. You can't be there, and it would they would switch it into a blocking Absolutely. shooting foul. Yep. But it's got to be clear and obvious, and I don't know that that is. Yeah, I'm not sure we'll have an angle. You almost need the, the direct overhead cam angle to look at. Uh, now, in that rule, it does say your heel, if it's off the ground, if it's like over line goes straight it up, it does. If it's over like the arc, it post. counts counting as being in the arc. And I think the officials just telling the coaches now, kind of what we just said, that I think they probably are gonna, is not. By the explanation, I think they are going to overturn this based wow. on just body language down on the floor. Timeout coordinator extraordinaire Austin Bramley down there getting the lowdown since we are up here yep. and can't do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah, well, we're relying on uh, some help down on the court, but it does appear, like you mentioned, they are going to reverse this, and that's going to be huge for Creighton because they have yet to score from the free throw line here in a little bit of time. They had four points total in that first half shooting free throws, going to get a chance to go there again. Morgan Molly will be the one. So blocking foul is called against Janai Yugovsky. That's, that's a big turn of events. As you said, Brad, gives Creighton a chance to get some points on the board, but also that's one of those energizing kind of plays for you defensively if you draw a charge like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now you're forcing a turnover, getting a stop. Good use of Matter of fact, they challenge. counted the basket on that play, Brad, because the ball yep. did go in, so it's a three-point play for Morgan Molly. Massive turnout. Yeah, that's a huge. There, exactly. Then. Yep, good catch on that, too. Nice little switch up there by Larkins, and she hits the deck. Mogensen comes away with a basketball. Jensen in transition for three. Larkins continues to attack. This time she draws the foul. That one will go against Molly. It'll be her third. So two free throws coming up for Larkins. And now Molly will quickly leave the floor. Along with Ronzik. Mallory Break. Carly Batchelor back into the game for Creighton here. Out there with Mogensen, Haran. And Jensen, so you got two starters, three reserves on the floor right now for the Jays. As Larkins knocks down both free throws. 16 points for her. A game high, but her team trails by 10, 39-29, as we hit the six-minute mark of the third quarter. Jensen picked up her dribble, well defended there by Giebert. Shot clock winded down at five and a foul on the floor. Whistled against Macy Gieber. It'll be her first. Team's third. This is a Creighton team. Even when they go to their bench, they can get some production off it. They have very athletic players off of that as well. Inside, that's Carly Batchelor with her first field goal of the ball game. And the lead now 12 for the Jays. Well, they weathered a little bit of a storm to start this third quarter. And they've, they've kind of 
ratcheted this end up again. This is a team, I think, in Creighton, when you look at what makes them excellent defensively, it starts with their ball pressure, and when they get that, they're very disruptive. Another bucket there for Larkin. Where would South Dakota be without Larkin? She is carrying them tonight, keeping them within striking distance. Got a discrepancy in the numbers here a little bit, Brad. In-house, what a finish there for Mogensen plus the foul. It says 41-31. In-house, live stats say 40-31. to Hopefully we get that sorted out here as we had to break with 4.43 to go, third quarter. That's an injury report right there with her back to us. Number 23, Natalie Mazurik, sophomore center out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Tore ACL last February. There's some good news, some progress for her. You see her in uniform for one thing. She has been cleared to return to practice. And so she's been back at it a little bit. Not ready for game action yet, but taking those strides. And boy, Kayla Karius would really like to have her back and available to her. But they're not going to rush it. They're going to take their time and make sure she's ready. And they'll use her when it, the time is right. Molly Mogensen, chance to complete the three-point play out of the timeout, which she does. Yeah, Creighton doing a good job getting to the foul line, converting there. And USD now again without Larkins on the floor, who has 18 of their points here tonight. What do they become offensively without her? Range of shots swatted away that time by Bachelor. 13 to shoot. South Dakota gets set to inbound underneath. <laughs> Catch and shoot. Geber for three. Well executed play with the screen, got a clean look, just didn't convert it. And that's kind of been the story of the game for South Dakota shooting it from the perimeter. Mogensen is heating up here. Ollie Mogensen, 16 points on six of eight shooting. Eight of those here in the second half. That's the thing, Creighton's got the ability to get scoring from a lot of different positions, and you're seeing Mogensen tonight stepping up. She has matched her career high, as a matter of fact. Nice now pass. in transition, breaks the finish. And a timeout for Kayla Karius Kevin with 3.39 to go as Creighton has opened this thing up here in the third quarter. Weathered that early storm out of the halftime, Brad. Now a 7 nothing run to stretch the lead to 17 at 48 to 31. Break on the floor means we check in with our friends at Avera Orthopedics. Pain in even one joint can take a toll on your entire body. For example, a painful neck can place stress on your shoulders, or a pain in your knee can cause you to walk in a way that affects your hips, back, and feet. Solutions are different for everyone, but may include splints, stretches, or an adjustment to your diet to reduce inflammation. Joint pain does not have to mean surgery. There are many pain management and therapy options for you to consider. See your doctor to determine the best course of action for you. For more information, go to avera.org slash ortho. Fair amount of blue in the stands here inside the Sanford Cow Sports Center, and they've had plenty to cheer about after Creighton wobbled a little bit early. South Dakota got off to that great start, led by eight early in the second quarter. Here's Carly Duffy who's out on the floor for the first time, and the ball ripped away from her. As the Kyles turn it over, that's been a theme of the night for him, but they get one back on the other side. I think the biggest thing for South Dakota is they've got to figure out an identity again without Larkins out there. This team has struggled tonight when she has had to go to the bench to get a rest. Carson loses the handle, keeps it alive. Hempy lost her defender, scores plus the basket. Plus the foul, rather. 2.52 to go third quarter. Chance at a three-point play for Alexi Hempe. And I think Hempe is certainly one of these players that needs to be able to step up offensively. She's had some nice moments here tonight scoring, and that's one of them right there. Nice, aggressive drive. Taking the contact and finishing. 
Larkins returns. Zygupski returns. Carson will sit along with Duffney. Eight points for Hempy now. 48-34. Is, that's Bachelor just blowing right on by the defender. Scoring with ease inside. Creighton is really into a rhythm offensively, Brad, but they've really kind of sparked that rhythm on this end by Absolutely. creating a lot of turnovers. Yeah, I mean, you look at South Dakota scored 19 in the first quarter. They've only scored 15 cents, and it's because of that. They have put great pressure on the ball, has Creighton, forcing turnovers, and then... Turning those turnovers into points also a big key to this. Knocked out of bounds by Creighton, so South Dakota will reset and try it again with 18 on the shot clock. basket again but the ball just rolls off it's just been that kind of night since since that first quarter yep. on the offensive end for USD and Creighton's done a nice job just forcing Larkins into making tougher shots after that first quarter they brought more help that time they switch the handoff and Larkins just hasn't had a lot of clean looks he's had to really work for it you can see they're switching a lot of stuff they're taking away what USD wants to run This is exactly what the Jays did Monday night to get a win in Brookings. Larkins three off the mark, long rebound, tapped out, controlled by Larkins. Are we going to get a foul on the loose ball? We will. Going to go against Mogensen, her first. That is the 15th foul for Creighton, though, so free throws. Coming up for Grace Larkins as Emma Ronsick checks back into the game. I love the energy Molly Mogensen plays with. This team feeds off it at the point guard spot. Just harassing there, trying to get a hand on it. And the bad news for Creighton is they send the hot shooter, though, to the line. Larkins, who's just been terrific all night offensively. Now 7 of 8 from the strike. Quickly back up to the floor. Here comes Jensen. Quiet night for her, but... Molly Mogensen has made up a lot of the difference. A travel called against Ronzik. This is the fifth turnover of the night for Creighton. Now, South Dakota's done a nice job on Creighton's leading score from last year. Ronzik, she only has two. They have not let her go in, in the low post very easily either. Switching everything right now, and it's really made life difficult for USD to get it into the paint. Well, Ambrosi picks up her dribble. Deep three here for Gebert, well off the mark. Tick down to a minute to play here, third quarter. Bachelor, no good. Rebound controlled by Yuguski, and Heppy slow to get up. Has to adjust the knee brace a little bit here. Could offensively relying on spreading the floor, trying to get driving lanes, but Creighton shutting those down well. Good post touch though that time. Gusky scores on Molly. 12 points the difference now, 50 to 38. Under 30 seconds to play. Just a little over a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. In fact, they have turned off the shot clock now, so no difference. No 
Hoganson stuck with it, won't go. Molly, though, there for the putback, and that'll end our third quarter. So 52-38 the score. 30 minutes in here in Vermillion. Number 21, Creighton trying to get another quality road win to start their season. Here in Vermillion, Creighton on top of South Dakota by a score of 52 a great night for Molly Mogensen, the starting point guard here at Creighton. The guy on the left there is her brother, Brock Mogensen, starting middle linebacker for the Kyle football team. He's a little conflicted tonight, as you can see, <laughs> with his quarter zip with Creighton. He's got both sides represented. Well done, Brock. But his sister, all she's done is match a career high with 16 points. She's been a problem for South Dakota Absolutely. in this game. And she's been equally disruptive on this end of the floor de defensively. Just being very scrappy, ball pressure. Nyaguski, a little bit of offense out of her here in the second half. Couple of buckets. She's got six points for South Dakota, but right back the other way comes Creighton. Rachel Jensen. Back into double figures. Nowhere near the 30-point output she put forth the other night in Brookings, but she's up to 10 now. And South Dakota's just not a been able to this point, Brad, to string any points together. They've gotten some here and there, but yeah. Creighton has done a good job eliminating the runs for South Dakota to try to get back in this game. Yeah, that's the key. Don't let any runs happen if you've got this kind of lead. Creighton's done a terrific job of that. Rontick's pass picked off by Morgan Hansen. We haven't seen much of since that first half. Wide open look, wing three for Geeter. She just can't get one to fall here. Yeah, a rough night for her. She's had some good looks, clean looks, but ball not going in. And you could really say that for the entire USD team. They are two of 15 from three after having such a great night shooting it here in their first game. Forty points on the board. With about eight and a half to go, fourth quarter. Another tough one coming up for Creighton next time out as they take on Nebraska, another ranked team. Yeah, the start of the season for Creighton is, is really challenging. I mean, and, and this is a team that's built to handle it. I mean, they have so many players back, but at South Dakota State, at South Dakota, then like you mentioned, the game against Nebraska, those three teams in particular, all real quality opponents and, and backyard rivals, really, too, right? And at Northern Iowa, too. They travel to Northern Iowa. That's a team that's had some good seasons here over the last few years out of the Valley. Talking to Jim Flannery before this game, he says he really likes scheduling these teams. It's some traditional rivals that Creighton had in their past when they were playing in the Missouri Valley. You mentioned Northern Iowa, but just also these local teams like yeah. South Dakota, South Dakota State that are quality programs as well. He knows that if he can come and get a win here, it's a resume builder for postseason. And you don't have to go very far, you know. I yeah. mean, a lot of these <laughs> teams, they try to schedule games and they'll take whoever they can get. Uh, especially the, the higher level competition and a lot of times that means more miles covered and it's just not the case And that speaks to the quality of women's basketball in the state of South Dakota. Absolutely. It does uh, You look at these rosters of both these teams really made up of kids for the most part from kind of a an Upper Midwest region right Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska the Dakotas really well represented up and down both these teams Absolutely, is Janai Yaguski at the free throw line, missed the first. Missed them both. And that's had a lane violation there, exactly. They're going to shoot one more here. Say that's on Jensen. So Yaguski will get a third try from the free throw strike. Senior out of Harrisburg, South Dakota. Makes good on the extra attempt. And she has scored the last five points now for USD. So good to see Yugovsky come in, come in a part of this team offensively. Again, our story tonight really has just been for South Dakota. Grace Larkins has 20 of their 41 points right now. 
Back door there, nice cut from Batchelor, and she finishes. Grange couldn't get back in time. Good feed from Molly as well. That's just really nice offense, and you can see where Creighton is a veteran team. They pass it well, they share it well, they know where each other are going to be on that offensive end. Ebert off the dribble. Jensen went down hard there. She is a tough player. She she got bumped around, tossed around a ton on Monday night in that South Dakota State game. Popped up every single time, just like that. Jensen out of Lakeville, Minnesota. And just a junior. Creighton running some nice sets here to get a clean look that time for Morgan Molly from the three-point line. And they've made five shots in a row at the Blue Jays. 21 now for Molly. Range trying to answer for South Dakota. Shots just continue to not go in from outside for USD in this game. Now it's 2 of 16 from outside. There were 19 of 27 in that win against Midland on Monday night as Bachelor has done some nice things off the bench here in the second half. Yeah, another run, though, for the Blue Jays here. It's 11-1 here in the last few minutes. Timeout on the floor for Kayla Karius and the Coyotes. 63-41 the score. Creighton rolling on the road here tonight. Have a look at the line score, Brad. Based on the way this thing started, I don't think you or I could have guessed that this is where we would be sitting with 6.25 to go. USD was playing some really good basketball, both ends of the floor, to start this game, I'd say, over the first 12 minutes or so. Absolutely. But that's where Creighton took over, and they have not looked back since. Yeah, when you look at about two minutes into that second quarter, USD was in control of this thing, and then a 19-0 run by the Blue Jays to end the first half, and it has been a different game ever since. Walker to Murs with it now. Big, strong finish for the freshman. She went to work on fellow freshman Kennedy Townsend there from Creighton. Those are the first bench points in this game for South Dakota. That's something they will need to continue to develop going forward. Range lost her footing, and they're going to get a late whistle here. And that call goes against Mogensen. It's her fourth. Now, you look at this Creighton team. We knew they were a very quality opponent coming in here, being ranked 21st in the country. And a team that has high expectations this year with so many players back, a veteran team, and they've played like it. They didn't panic in the first quarter, Jay, when they got down, stuck to their game plan here, and they've really played well in this second half. Bachelor scores again. She has been a force offensively in this second half, Brad. Ten points now for her on five of ten shooting. And Creighton as a team has made a really nice run here in this fourth quarter game. I mean, even when they're up big, they're not looking at the scoreboard. They are continuing to put the pressure on. Jensen back out of the floor now, replacing Mogensen. Oh, what a game Mogensen's had. You talk about it, last year averaged six points a game. She had nine the other night in Brookings, along with seven rebounds, four assists. But 16 here tonight to tie her career high. Uh, just the energy she played with, I thought, really sparked this team. I mean, they fed off of what she was doing on the defensive end. Jensen scores again, 67-43. Now, Lauren Jensen, after a slow start, I mean, you could see how talented she can be, too, as a scoring guard. Mr. Mers sticks with it, got it back and fouled on the putback. Creighton, by the way, picked second in the Big East this year behind UConn. But they're going to have something to say about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, they're one of those teams that's going to be there at the end. And, I mean, I mean, barring some injuries or anything like that, Creighton appears to be a team that will be playing in the NCAA tournament with this kind of lineup and experience. And, you know, they want to they replicate what they did last year. I mean, you get a taste of going all the way to the Elite Eight. Again, this is a team that, I mean, they won at Iowa and then beat Iowa State last year in the NCAA tournament. You know they want to get back there again and get another crack at that. Bachelor kicks it out. Moran for three in and out. Another rebound for Demers. She has done some work on the glass here tonight off the bench. Grace Larkins has had to play so many minutes, and this has been an intense game. You can see right now she just doesn't have the energy, gets beat there on that back cut defensively. And that's why I say, you know, she needs the supporting cast. She can't do everything on her own for South Dakota because it's hard to do that for 40 minutes and play at the intensity she is used to. Range. Good work on the offensive glass there. Got the rebound and fouled on the putback. I think when South Dakota breaks down this film, one of the positives is going to be the glass. They've done a nice job competing there. In fact, plus one right now, but 10 O boards. Now, granted, there's probably been a lot more opportunities for missed shots than they would like in this game, but that's an area where they've, they've got a chance to really be good, Jay, I think, is on the boards with this athletic lineup. Three throws there for Grange. Six points for her now. I think they take away a positive and other defending the three against this great team. They're three of 14. They haven't given them a lot of really great looks from outside. I feel like the perimeter defense has been solid. And on cue, they knock <laughs> one down. But Grace Larkins was right there closing strong. Yeah, that was, that was just a really good shot. I mean, not bad defense at all, but I would agree with you. They've guarded the arc well. But Creighton has found other ways to get looks around the rim. The Murs left that one short. Under three to play. And Creighton next time out will host Nebraska on the 15th of November. South Dakota back in action this weekend as they travel to Bradley. Hempy back into the game. Here comes Emma Ronzik replacing Jensen. Now South Dakota came into this game. They they wanted this to be a little bit of a, a litmus test. Where are they at right now? And so they're going to learn a lot by watching this film, evaluating what went right, what went wrong, areas they need to improve on. And you don't know those things until you really play a quality opponent. And so that's the advantage of playing this game for South Dakota is they're going to they're going to learn a lot. They're going to take a lot from it. That's going to make them, Jay, a better team going forward. And, and Kayla Carlius knows Carlius knows she's you know, she's got a little bit of rebuilding to do here. I mean, even if Don Plutzowite had come back and been the coach of this program, there was going to be a lot of rebuilding that had to be done here. And uh, it's going to get there. It's just going to take some time. The beauty is, is you've got a couple of pieces out there. You know you can build around. And Absolutely. Grace Larkins is in the upper echelon of elite players in the Summit League. There's no, not much question about that based on what yeah. we've seen here tonight. Oh, yeah. I mean, and she's she, just a sophomore. That's her right there with the ball. Still trying to figure out a way to get another hoop. It's Carly Duffney with her first basket of the ball game. Richard freshman out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Under two minutes to play. Ronzik, pass taken away by Larkin. It's been a tough night for Emma Ronzik. Yeah, coming back and playing in her home state of South Dakota. It has not been an easy night. South Dakota's done a, a really nice job against her bringing help. Yeah, it's not been her that's been the biggest trouble spot for them. It's been players like Morgan Molly, Molly Morgan Mogensen. We've seen Carly Batchelor. Do some damage here offensively in the second half off the bench as well. 
Jensen they've done a fairly good job on as well, but she's after a sluggish start picked it up and starting to hit some shots. Three-pointer off the mark there from Townsend. As we approach one minute to play in the ball game. Well, another South Dakota player that's on this Creighton roster, not able to play tonight due to injuries, is Lexi Unruh, yep. a player that had a terrific high school career at Sioux Falls Christian. That, you know, talking to the Creighton coaching staff, they're very high on her impact, one of the most athletic players they said they've ever had on their team. And she's undergoing some... Injury recovery there and wish her the best hope of getting back on the floor for Creighton. Yeah, unfortunately tore her ACL in September and had a chance to, to have a role on this team, adding some backcourt depth. Absolutely. As just a redshirt freshman. Certainly wish her well in her recovery, as we do with Natalie Mazurik. And then Joy Bergstrom, talented freshman for South Dakota, suffered an ACL injury. In October, unable to go here as Ronzik gets one to go. And then Allison Popolski, one of the returning players, one of the more experienced players. She had an ACL injury in September, in July, rather, and is unable to go this year. Yep. Morgan Hansen. As Creighton can dribble this thing out and get out of here with another impressive road victory to start their season. They go to South Dakota State to open the year, get a win there, and then they come here and after a slow start, totally turn the tables on South Dakota and hand the Coyotes just their sixth loss all time inside this building. South Dakota came into the night 79-5 all time at the Sanford Coyotes Sports Center in Creighton. Hands them a lopsided loss here. 74-51 is your final. And Jim Flannery and the Blue Jays, a couple of impressive performances away from home to start their season. This is a team that's got big expectations, and they certainly showed why here tonight. 74-51, the final we'll hear from head coach when we come back. Final score here in Vermillion tonight. Number 21, Creighton, 74-51 on the road. Gets the win over South Dakota. Jay Elson, Brad Newitt back with you here in Vermillion. And joining us now courtside is head coach of the Blue Jays, Jim Flattery. And Jim, uh, South Dakota gave you uh, some trouble there early on. How did you get the ship corrected? <laughs> well, they really came out great. Uh, Larkins attacked, and we couldn't stay in front of her. And... They scored around us in the post. I thought they were really physical um, at both ends. I mean, offensively on their post-ups and also defensively, they they pushed us out and made us uncomfortable. And, you know, I think uh, just fatigue helped us a little bit, our depth and our, and our experience. And, um, you know, I thought we did a, a way better job of staying in front of Larkins after the first quarter. Um, and that was certainly helpful. And, and I thought we battled battled better in the post than we did in that first quarter and eventually offensively we we're going to kick it in i mean we missed i mean i look i think emma and uh lauren were th one for ten in the first quarter and mm -hmm. um they're not going to stay that cold so um i wasn't as worried about what we were doing on the offensive end as i was uh just guarding a little bit better and and hoping that we could slow them down sure now coach talk a little bit about your point guard uh Mogensen, I thought she played terrific tonight. It was a great yeah. energy spark for you. Had 16 points, a career high for her. Yeah, Molly's a solid, just a solid player. She's not ultra quick, uh, but she can play. She just plays at a pace where she can make good decisions, and she's a she's a pretty good scoring point guard. And she's, I think she's going to give us, you know, 10 or 12 a night a lot of times, and. Uh, you know, she's played a lot for us. She played over 20 minutes a game on our team last year. Uh, defensively, I thought she did a good job on on Grace. Uh, we, we changed our matchups and put her on uh, Grace after the first quarter, so I thought she really helped us there. But, uh, yeah, we needed her because we had some other people who were struggling shooting the ball, so it was really, really good to see her play the way she did. Coach, uh, you know, such high expectations for your team coming off that Elite Eight uh, appearance a year ago. Tough schedule to start. You go on the road to Brookings. <laughs> you get a win there. It's a tough one tonight here in Vermillion. You uh, you uh, certainly know how difficult it is to win in those buildings. 
But this schedule and the way that your team has started, I have to imagine, uh, is, is pretty exciting to see them respond the way they have on the road. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a group that's played together a lot. I mean, we've got a lot of third year and even fourth and one fourth year and one fifth year player that have played together a lot. And so that makes a difference. Our, you're right, our schedule's really tough. We only have one home game in, uh, in November, and it's against a ranked Nebraska team. So, um, but I don't have anybody to blame but myself. I do the, I do the <laughs> scheduling, so um, it's, it's on me. But, uh, you know, we have a group that can handle it, I think. But these were... You know, this score isn't going to indicate how competitive this game was. Mm -hmm. um, so we're happy to get out of the out of the state twice with a win. <laughs> no doubt. Well, appreciate you taking a little time. Congrats on that victory and good luck uh, against Nebraska. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right. Thank Thanks. you. Jim Flannery in his 20th year. And, Brad, you said it earlier. He's had a lot of good teams. He's made five trips to the NCAA yeah. tournament. But this team. <laughs> this is going gonna, is gonna to be one of his the ones he remembers, I think, with the special level of talent that he has. Yeah, and he's got a special group here and a group that's used to playing together uh, and really believes in each other and believes in the system that they're playing. You could see that on the floor just early on here. I mean, they look like a team that's in midseason, yeah, their second game in. Well, and again, we talked about it with him. The way this game started, I don't know that you or I would have predicted yep. that this is where we would have finished. South Dakota came out, played very well on both ends of the floor. 22-14, they're up on Creighton early in the second quarter, but a 19-0 run yeah. to close the half. That's where this game turned completely around. It did, and it started with the defense on Creighton's end. I mean, they forced turnovers. That led to some offensive transition for them, and, and this really fueled this game and flipped the script and got them in control. So they were up 11 at the half, and as we go to our second half, highlights brought to you by Avera Orthopedics. You know, there was a little bit of a storm early on from South Dakota. Creighton weathered that. Janiah Yuguski tried to inject a little life offensively for the Coyotes. And she has ends up with a decent night for her, but just shots going down were too few and too far between. And when they weren't not hitting shots, they were turning the ball over to people like Molly Mogensen. Yeah, Mogensen was the catalyst for Creighton, and I thought she was the difference maker. I mean, she shot it really well, but her defensive presence, I think, was really what fueled this team and what got them a big road win tonight. And Mogensen in front of her family. Tried a career high with 16 points on the night. And then we talked about uh, Bachelor a lot in that second half. She she came off the bench and was a nice little spark for them. And on top of the, the usual suspects exactly. for the Blue Jays. Yeah, you get a double-figure score like that to come off the bench and do it efficiently. That's what's key. Final stats brought to you by CU Mortgage Direct. The turnover number is going to be one. Kayla Kari is certainly circles as they go back and break down this film. Yeah, and 10 of those were in the first half. That's what fueled that 19-0 run that we mentioned earlier. Um, I think the points off turnovers then resulting. But you look at what Creighton did in the paint. The three-point shot wasn't there for them tonight, but they found ways to get to the basket, whether it was off the bounce, post touches, basket cuts. That was really the key and why they were able to shoot that higher percentage. Grace Larkins did lead the way for South Dakota. She was a bright spot, certainly 20 points, but she had to work for it. She took six, 17 shots. Creighton made things much more difficult. She was really efficient early in this game, but down the stretch, the Blue Jays made her work for Absolutely. everything she got. She had 11 in the first quarter, but only nine in the rest of the way. And like you said, never let her feel comfortable with the ball in her hand. She really had to make a lot of tough shots down the stretch to try to keep USD in this thing. All right, so again, your final score here tonight, Creighton number 21 sweeps the state of South Dakota, follows up Monday's opening win at South Dakota State with a win here tonight over South Dakota, 74-51 the final. The Blue Jays improving to 2-0 with Nebraska on deck. The Coyotes will hit the road for Illinois. They'll take on Bradley this weekend as they fall to one and one. But for Brad Newitt, Travis Wagman, our producer, our entire Midco Sports crew, I'm Jay Elson. Thanks for watching USD Basketball here on Midco Sports.